Hi everyone, Cindy Squirrel here from Squirrel Mills Farms. My granddaughter Aubrey has been bugging me for a couple days now. She wants me to tell her the story of the birch tree. Now, um, I'm going to apologize in case I <laughs> wreck this story. I'm, I'll apologize to the elders. I'm going to try and do my best. Try and make you proud. Okay. Way back when, Aubrey, when the world was just beginning, there was a medicine man, and he had a camp that he had all his food and his clothes in it, and there was a birch tree there. And he asked the birch tree, birch tree, will you look after my camp for me while I go check my trap line? And the birch tree said yes, he would look over the camp. But the birch tree got bored and he fell asleep. And the coyotes came in and ate all the medicine man's food and totally destroyed the camp. Everything was destroyed. So when the medicine man came back, he was very upset. He had lost everything. So he went to the birch tree and he shook it. And he said, wake up. He said, everything of mine is gone. And the birch tree was, of course, very upset. So the next day after the medicine man had got all his camp back together and that, he asked the birch tree again. He said, birch tree, will you look after my camp while I go check my trap lines? And again, the birch tree promised that he would. <sighs> when the medicine man came back, he found the birch tree had fallen asleep again. And all the stuff that he had brought back from the trap line the day before was gone eaten by coyotes. This time, he, the medicine man, was quite angry. So he took pine needles and he went, bad, bad, bad tree, you broke your promise. And then the birds up in the tree, which were ravens, were laughing. So at the punishment for the birch tree. So the medicine man reached up, grabbed the raven, and with his tail feathers, hit the tree, spanked the tree with the black feathers of the raven. And the birch tree promised that he would never, ever fall asleep again. So the medicine man, he said, from this day forward, you will show the scars of the pine needles that I spanked you with. You will show the black lines of the raven's feathers that I hit you with. And that's why there's all those marks on the tree. So the tree promised that from this day forward, he would help the people with every part of his tree. The outer bark they can use to make canoes, to make paper to write on, to make containers that they could trade for stuff. It can be used to start fires and it can be boiled down for the oil. The inner bark, if you take it off, there is a red, red coating on it. And if you scrape that red coating off, you can make it for a tea. The leaves, you can make into medicine and a tea. And the sap, if you can 
put a hole in the tree and it will run a liquid that you can drink straight out of the tree or you can boil it down and make a syrup and then the birch tree promised that even on its dying days it will give you stuff this is a horse hoof polypore grows on a birch tree and it you can use for wood for starting a fire and if you are lost in the woods and you find a birch tree and you're hungry, you're starving, you cannot find food, the birch tree will grow these polypores. And when they're young, although they're spongy and very tough and chewy, and they are bitter, they are food and they will keep you alive. And then, on the very last of the birch tree's life, it will grow the most amazing chaga, which is a fungus, which is will cure. It is the greatest gift to the people. It will cure cancer and cure a lot of things, and it will heal, and you make it into a tea. So that, Aubrey, is the story of the birch tree. Mm. Did you like it? Yeah. <laughs>